Hello friends, what do you say? Thank you for joining me today. Science, math, reading fun. April happies for everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, I've got some friends watching me already. That's awesome. So, I've got all sorts of fun things for April, and I'd like to get started with a little handshake. It's interesting that there's so much attention now for SEL, social emotional learning. We are really realizing we have focused so much on academics that we're forgetting about the whole child and, and how they relate to others and how they feel about themselves. So these handshakes are a perfect way to start your day with social interactions with students in your room. And a good one for April is the butterfly handshake. So all the students hold up their right thumb and then they find a partner and they hook their thumb with their partner's right thumb and then they stick out their fingers and they fly it around and it's the butterfly handshake. Another one that's good for April is the cool dude and this one they make a fist bump and they gently bump their friend's hand and then they go like that. And this is a good learning opportunity to talk about how to touch someone gently and you don't want to do it too hard or you will hurt them. Cheers are another way to encourage that social emotional learning and the reason I like these group cheers is that everybody feels good when you do these things. So a good one for April is the parrot cheer and they put their arms like this and they go, look, you did a good job, look, you did a good job. Or you can teach them how to give themselves a high five. Show me your five, say high five, high five. They can also do the traditional high five, but they can give themselves a high five like that. And then another good one is hip, hip, hooray. And they hit one hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Now, April is National Poetry Month. And so, um, you know, I love poems. And why? They're good for oral language. They're good for phonological awareness vocabulary, comprehension, and they're motivating for children to want to read. And um, you can choose poems that you liked as a child. You can use nursery rhymes, that's poetry. Um, and it would be nice if they all had this little craft activity, a uh, poem for your pocket. And so I took an envelope and I sealed it and I cut it in half. And then if you punch holes in the top, you can tie on a piece of yarn or string and then they can decorate it and they can all have a special little pocket to put their poem in. And I have a poem for you. This one is one my daughter wrote. A poem, a poem is a very special thing. It takes the words and make them sing. A poem is a present, a poem is a tree with world, words spot piled up like ice cream in your bowl to eat. A poem, a poem, is a treasure and an art, so always carry one with you in your heart. And so the children can all carry a special poem in their little poetry pocket. Uh, you might also want to have a poetry club where any student who can say a poem, again, it can be a few lines long like rain rain go away come again another day or it can be a longer one and they can sign their name as a member of the poetry club or it would be fun one friday to have a poetry cafe and to read poems and then teach the children how to snap their fingers like the beat poets used to do so great month to celebrate poetry also a good month to celebrate rain so i have a rain hat story for you this is a story about a creative and resourceful teacher um, one weekend it rained and the school flooded and she went in on monday morning there was rain every place water every place and all she had to teach with were some newspapers on a tall shelf so she passed out the newspapers to the children and they talked about the pictures and the stories the pictures represented and they found words they could read and letters in their name and after a while 
they got a little bored with that. And so the teacher thought, you know what? We could have a science lesson. So she showed the children how to take their newspapers and they turn them into rain hats and they all put their rain hats on and they went out in the rain and they heard this noise. And do you know what it was? That's right, it was a fire truck. And the teacher thought, well, if they had fire helmets, they could go down and help the firefighters put out the fire. So they turned the rain hats into pirate hats and they used them like scoops and put water out. Now, they got tired of that after a while, and the teacher thought, well, we could have a history lesson. So she showed them how to turn those pirate hats, those rain hats and those fire helmets into pirate hats. And they put them on, and then they thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun if we had boats like the pirates? So they turned those pirate hats into boats, and they went floating down the road, and they ran into a rock, and the back end of the boat came off. They floated down the road a little bit more, and they ran into a tree, and the front end of their boat came off. They floated down the road a little bit more, and they went under a bridge, and the top of the boat came off. Now, anybody else would have been a nervous wreck, but not those creative and resourceful teachers who watched this Facebook because they knew all the children had on their life preservers and they put them on and swam safely back to school. And then when they got there, they used these like souvenir shirts and they drew pictures and wrote stories about their adventures. Now, Carolyn Koslowski, who helped me do the happies, has some of the cutest ideas for rain. Um, one of them, if you get these little clear pebbles, you can write words or letters on the pebbles with Sharpie. And then if you get a bowl and put the pebbles in there with cotton balls, the children get to look for the raindrops in the clouds and they can take these out and then they can write the words or the letters that they find. Another great science activity that she had with the with the little uh, cotton balls. Uh, you give these to the children, and I don't know where my straw went, and you have cloud races. And so they put these down, and then they take the straws, and they blow the cotton balls across the table with the straws. So it's a great way to talk about wind energy. This is a little song about the water cycle. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation all around. Accumulation, evaporation, the water cycle goes round and round. And so you put on a clear bead for evaporation, a white bead for condensation, the clouds, a blue bead for raindrops, precipitation, a brown bead for a mud puddle accumulation, and then the sun comes out and warms up the water and it starts all over again with evaporation. I also have a little attention grabber that has to do with rain. And so the children hold up their hand and they do what you do. You tap one finger and then you tap two fingers and then three, and then four, and then five, and then you make thunder with your feet, and then you reverse it five, four, three, two, one. And if you do it very slowly, and all the children follow along with you, it sounds like there's a rainstorm coming in, and then the rainstorm goes away. This is really good for self-regulation, too, because the children have to watch, and they have to participate, and they have to regulate when you do that. Well, there's rain in April, and there's poetry in April, and there's also Earth Week coming up. And so I have this really cool little book that you can make. Now, this is something that you don't want to try to do in one day. You need to spread this out over the week. And you can find the patterns for this in our April Happies and also on my blog. Um, but the Earth Book, Green Trees, Blue Water, Shining sun, mountains tall, clear skies. How can you save the earth? Now with the younger children, this would be a great wordless book that they could just make up sentences. 
for the older children, um, they could write descriptive sentences. So um, and it, you could use this with four-year-olds. You could also use this with third or fourth graders um, to encourage them to do some descriptive writing and some how-to writing. Uh, another idea for Earthquake, children love hats and, and jewelry. And a simple thing to do is to give children a sentence strip and let them draw things that they're thankful for in nature. And then if you go out on the playground, you can collect them little, just a few little things, little leaves or flowers to glue on their nature crown. Um, and I think it's real important when you collect things outside to remind them you never want to pull something off of a tree or I never want to pull a flower off because it'd be like somebody jerking your thumb or something. We only find things on the ground and pick them up and use them this way. Um, we've got some membership cards to the green team and a song about being on the green team and of course recycling is another big thing that we like to talk about in April and a wonderful activity is to have the children save cardboard food boxes for a week. Um, you could even ask them to get a paper grocery bag and save the cardboard food boxes for a week and they bring them in and here are just a few things you can do with those cardboard food boxes. You can let the children stuff them with newspaper and tape the top and you've got some great blocks. Great engineering activity they can build with the blocks. Another thing that you can do is cut off the fronts and the backs of the boxes and then they have to match up the fronts and the backs. It's a good visual discrimination activity for young children. You can take your boxes and if you punch holes around the sides, they're great lacing cards for, with a shoelace or with yarn. You can take the cereal boxes and you can let them, the children cut them into puzzles. And it's good to give them a specific number of pieces like eight or 10 because otherwise they'll cut it into 100 pieces and they'll never get it back together. It's also good if you have matching boxes, they can cut one apart and then put it on top of the other one. My kids used to love concentration games. And so with the little individual cereal boxes, you put them down and then they turn over two at a time. I know you know how to play the memory game, but that's just another thing to do with your cereal boxes. And you can always make books if you put them to book together. What's for breakfast? Let each child tell you their favorite cereal, like Omar Eats Cheerios. Easy reading activity for beginning readers. And you can take those empty boxes and you can turn them into book covers or cut paper. And you've got a little tiny box book with something like animal crackers. Now, I've got another book that I wanted to share with you today. It's called The Flip Book. And I've got some different things that you can do with this to tie in with April um, and some science. And so this is how you do the flip book. You make a hot dog fold. And then you make a hamburger fold. And then you make a juice box fold. And if you open it up and cut on the three crease lines halfway, this is what it will look like. And then you fold these down and you've got a flip book. And you can flip these things up. And the kids like to call this the garage door book. Now, what can you do with this? Because, you know, if I can think of anything to do instead of a worksheet, I'm going to do it. So, um, younger children, they could put a letter on the front, open it up, draw something that starts with that sound. If you're teaching a second language, they can put vocabulary words in English here and then the other word here. Or they could write the definition. You can use this for different ways to make a number. So you write a number on the front and they open it up and they put the different ways you can make that number. Younger children could just make that amount. You could use this for antonyms, up, down. You could use this for mother animals, baby animals. You could use this for life cycle, egg, egg caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. You could use this for four seasons. Oh my goodness, all the things that you can do with this. Um, I had this one on my blog a couple days ago that you've got the root, the leaves, the stem, and the flower. 
Um, how about this idea for younger children to help them with the word the? You write the on the front of all of these, and then they open it up and draw something. And so they can read the bird, the cat, the tree, the car. And um, last but not least, um, for habitat, that they draw an animal home on the front, and then they open it up and they draw an animal that you could find in that habitat. So lots of things that you can do with those blank books. And, you know, um, I want to talk a minute about games. I received an email um, from a teacher, and the teacher was told that they shouldn't play games, that they wanted more rigor in the classroom, and games weren't a way to get that rigor. Um, it disturbs me that some people don't understand child growth and development and brain research and learning because it takes 15 to 20 times to put a word or vocabulary in the brain. It takes multiple times um, for children to learn addition, subtraction facts. All of those skills we want them to master, we have to do them over and over again. And sure, you can do them with a worksheet and you can do them with a video game, but we want to make sure that we engage multiple senses. And another thing about games is you're doing that social emotional at the same time. They're interacting with their friends and that uh, oral language, all of those things are important. So um, a, a real simple game, and this has just got rigor as much as anything else. You have to adapt it. You know, the other half of that envelope that I cut up, well, if you write yes on one side and no on another side, this is just a real quickie game. You've got a few minutes before lunch. Seven minus nine, <laughs> excuse me, nine minus seven equals four and they hold up yes or no. So every child is participating, and you can look around very quickly and see who's got it and who doesn't. Um, you can do this with recalling information in science or social studies. You can use this with sounds. Mommy, mommy starts with M, mm, and they can hold it up and respond. I have another game. Um, this one has many variations. It's just, I have a Pringles can that I covered with paper. You just need to make sure the uh, can has a smooth edge, okay? And um, then you get your jumbo craft sticks. So this game can be used for letters, for sight words, for numbers, oops, for addition subtraction facts, Four phrase cards, that's two or three words that we frequently come across in, when we read, and it helps to memorize those. Um, for sentences, will you play a game with me? So really, any skill that you want the children to master, you put it on the sticks. One skill per stick, you don't want letters and math facts, but you know, stick with what you're working on. And then you put in a few sticks that have a joke, like it could be zap, and when you pass the can around, whoever gets zap goes zap and puts all their sticks back. Um, it could be wiggle worms. Whoever draws this stands up and you wiggle like a worm. Um, it could be boom, and when you get that one, you clap your hands and say boom. Um, and it could be positive things, too. It could be a little star, and whoever gets that one gets to keep the star stick. And, um, and you can also add sticks for the older kids, like skip or take an extra turn, some of those cards similar to what you have in Uno. So it's a good small group game that you could play after you've had a guided reading group and you've got a few extra minutes, you could play that game. I used to tell my kids, if you work hard, we'll play a game at the end. And so they would that was good motivation for them. They didn't realize the game was going to reinforce what I was doing, but it was still, if you call it a game, they want to play it. Um, you could also put this in, in a center. Several children could play this together um, independently. And um, one other little learning material I wanted to share with you today, the, the little cups, the little bathroom cups, and you can write sight words, letters, numbers, anything that you're working on on the cups, and you tell the children if you can read the word, you can build with the cup, and then you could let them write the words on the cup or write the numbers on the cup. So it's just a good little independent way, kind of a sneaky way to reinforce some of the skills that we're working on. So um, this month in our April Happies, we've got all sorts of 
fun songs and we've got writing prompts and um, all sorts of visual activities that I shared with you today. And a lot of these things you'll also find on my blog and my website. So, goodbye now, goodbye now, the clock says we're done. We've had fun learning. Goodbye, everyone. I love you a little. I love you a lot. My love for you could fill 14 pots, 12 tin cans, 5 tea cups, and 2 dish pans. Keep on singing. Happy April.